Welcome to Love Unlimited Church Online. My name is Mark Rodriguez. I am the pastor of the church, and today you are in for a great message. I have my friend, Pastor Muta from Relevant Church Niles, sharing a message titled, The Miracle Ahead. So prepare your hearts, prepare yourself for the miracle that God has for you and that God has for our church. What's up, Love Unlimited? This is your boy, Pastor Muta from Relevant Church in Niles, Michigan. I'm so glad and thrilled to be with you guys this morning. Before I say anything else, I want to give a big shout out to Pastor Mark and Leilani, your fearless leaders down there in Miami. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here with your church. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for everything that you're doing in Miami. Love Unlimited, you guys have incredible leaders. Love Unlimited, you guys are incredible. I pray that God continues to make you a force for change in your community, your region, and world. I believe God is with you, and the best is yet to come. So before I get started, I want you to do a couple of things for me. Number one, I want you to share this with somebody. Start a watch party. Let other people know that you're watching. Invite them into this word this morning. Uh, the thing, the other thing that I want you to do is I want you to tag three people. There may be somebody in your life who needs some encouragement, who needs a fresh word, uh, a word that's going to cause them to pursue vision for the rest of the year, pursue vision for the rest of their life. Would you do me a favor? Tag three people that you want God to bless through this word. Let me go ahead and pray, then we'll get into it. God, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your word. Speak to us this morning in the only way you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me ask you something. Do you have anybody in your life, or maybe you are the person in your life, who I would like to call the back-in-the-day person? The person who's always talking about how good things were back in the day, how you had the hourglass figure back in the day, how you were a star athlete back in the day, how you had the great job back in the day, how you were popular back in the day, or just how things were better back in the day. I remember as a brand new Christian starting to go to a church, uh, the church had a handful of people in there. They loved Jesus. They loved the Lord. And I loved being a part of it. But there was a lady there who never let me forget about how the church used to be thriving and impacting the world back in the day. At least that's what she would say. Uh, the church had a better choir back in the day. It had a better pastor back in the day. It had a better children's program back in the day. They had greater outreach back in the day. You ever have one of those in the who's always talking about back in the day. Not too long ago, I, I read a book called The Road Back to You, and it's all about the Enneagram. If any of you guys have taken the Enneagram test, then you would know that the Enneagram has different numbers that are assigned to different types of people. And the thing that I discovered through the Enneagram is that I am one of those back in the day types of people. Help me somebody. Help me, Lord. The thing about it is I knew this all along, though. But I never really wanted to admit. I just said, I just remembered the past. But no, I am one of those back in the day types of people. Uh, when I got into ministry, I talk about how I used to work in business and was thriving in business back in the day. When I was in business, I'll talk about how things were awesome in college back in the day. Uh, you get the drift. It was always about back in the day. I've come to the conclusion that I think the memory of back in the day has become a coping mechanism for many of us. I believe that because we fail to see where God is leading us, we fixate on where we've been. We fixate on the wins that we had in the past, the victories we had in the past. We forget that we are living in the present. And all of us have dreams and aspirations and goals, but many of us have gotten so disheartened about the future that we have chosen to live in a perpetual cycle of rehearsing the past. And you know what they say about the definition of insanity. It's doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Can I get a witness? Somebody in here talking so much about the past that you can't even get to your future. But I, I want to encourage you with this. We're at a pivotal moment in life. We're in a pivotal moment in culture. We're, we're at a pivotal moment in our nation. We're in a pivotal moment in the church where we must forget what we know or what we think we know or what we've been through or what we've seen in the past and trust God to lead us through the unknown. 
There's a text in Isaiah chapter 43 that gives us a picture of uh, looking at back in the day. It's written to a group of individuals. The Israelites are in Babylonian captivity. Things have gone really bad for them. These were God's chosen people. They were uh, in the heyday, uh, the supreme nation they thought of themselves. They thought themselves greater than everybody else. They had some of the greatest kings, but through kings' bad decisions, through people's bad decisions, have found themselves now in captivity to the Babylonians. And they're in a situation where they're wondering, uh, can things get any better for us? Are, 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 my, are our lives going to be stuck living in captivity for the rest of Are things going to change? Has God forgotten about us? And I don't know about you if you've ever been in that situation where I don't know what got you in there. Maybe it was sin, maybe it was mistakes, or maybe it was just misfortune where you're in a space in your life when you're wondering, has God forgotten about me? Are things ever going to change? Do I have a future that I could look towards? They're wondering, where is God? Is he going to show up? And God shows up through this word from the prophet Isaiah. In verse 16, it tells us this. Isaiah speaking says, Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. He says, Who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They're extinguished and quenched like a wick. The story is a reminder of how God protected their ancestors when they were running away from the Egyptian army that was pursuing them. See, the Israelites were in bondage again back in the day. Uh, They were in a situation where they were under hard slave labor and God's mighty hand came and rescued them and he was leading them away from Egyptian captivity. But the Egyptians were like, man, we can't let these people go. We need these slaves to build up our nation. We need them under our control. There's so many of them. If they reorganize, they can come and take us over. So we need to pursue them. And so God's hand was with his children the entire time. They get to the Red Sea, and if you grew up in church, you remember the story. Uh, Their leader, Moses, puts his hand out, and he parts the waters, and the entire Israelite nations, hundreds and thousands, if not millions, are able to walk across dry ground. When they get to the other side, they see the Egyptian army pursuing them. They're also walking on dry ground. They're running on dry ground. They've got their horses. They've got their chariots. Pharaoh is out there, and they're pursuing them. They are determined that they're going to bring the Israelites back into bondage. And God's hand comes against Pharaoh. The waters come back. It covers up the chariots, covers up the horses, covers up the people. And God's victory is made through this story. And this story is reminding them, the children of Israel who are stuck in a situation under this new superpower that has kept them under bondage. It says, God is reminding them that a national superpower could not defend against his supernatural power. And I think for some of us who are watching this right now, uh, maybe the, uh, the COVID-19 and, and the misfortune that has come because of that, or maybe a bad relationship, or maybe just bad things that have happened in our lives, we're sitting there and wondering, saying, hey, can God rescue me? Does God pay attention to me? Can God protect me or get me out of this bad situation? And God wants to tell you, there is nothing in this world that is more powerful than the hand of God. You will stand protected by the hand of God. No matter how bad the situation, it seems like God's superpower is more powerful than anything that's in this world. And if I can tell you this, whatever you fear should fear God. Whatever you fear should fear God because God's hand is not too short to protect you or rescue you in your trial. But it's funny because this text begins with God rehearsing the past. It seems like God is talking about back in the day. And there's a reason for that. I remember talking to my dad when I was a brand new Christian, and my dad would tell me stories of how God had worked in his life, how God had done so many miraculous things in his life, and I would sit there, and I would be excited because I could believe that if this God can do this for my dad, then this God can probably do that for my life as well, too. Let me tell you something. If you're ever discouraged, if you're ever fearful, get you around some old church people. 
Some old people who've been in faith for a little while. People that can tell you about the amazing, miraculous stories of what God has done. If you want your faith built, get you around some people who've been walking with Jesus for quite some time. Then it goes on in verse 18. It says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Now there's a plot twist. You're like, what? What wait, just happened? Uh, God literally comes up to them and says, hey, forget all that. Yeah, what I did for the children of Israel back in the day, what I did for your ancestors back in the day, the way I used my superpower to overcome a superpower back in the day, forget all of that. Get it out of your head. Don't even think about it. He says, listen, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. He says, listen, get it out of your head. Remember what I did? Yeah, forget about it. I love movies. But let me tell you something. Movies with plot twists, with major plot twists, give me anxiety. I can't deal with anxiety. I'm one of those individuals when I'm watching a movie, I literally, when the plot twist uh, comes and I have no clue what's going to happen next is I got to get the spoilers. I got to get on my phone and read all the spoilers because I need to figure out what's happening next. I don't like plot twists and this is what happens right here. God comes and it seems like he's encouraging people. Hey, look what I've done before. And we, we sing songs like that, don't we? I see you move. You move in mountains. And I believe I see you do it again. And God is like, forget about it. Forget what I did in the past. Because God is not limited by what he's done because he's not exhausted the possibilities of what he can do. I'm going to tell you that again. God is not limited by what he's done because he has not exhausted the possibilities of what he can do. Isaiah chapter 42, 9 says this, Behold, the former things have come to pass. New things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. He says, listen, the former things have passed away. Things that happened in the past, your victories of the past, the joys of the past, all that things are gone. God wants to do something new. He wants to point you to a different vision. If we get caught up with what God has done, if we get caught up only looking at about how God has brought us through, and if we only look at how God did it for us, then if we only look at back in the day, we will miss what he wants to do for us today. He goes on in verse 19 of chapter 43, one of my favorite verses. In fact, we planted our church on this verse. Isaiah 43, 19 says, Behold, I'm doing a new thing, and now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God comes to them and says, listen, uh, forget the things of the past. Yes, I did that before, but behold, I'm doing a new thing, and now it springs forth. It's happening now, not tomorrow, not next year, not next week. It's already begun. It's happening right now. And then he asked them a question, do you not perceive it? Every once in a while, I read stuff in the Bible where I'm just like, God, why would you ask that question? Like, what was the point of that? God, why, why did you ask people who are in bondage, people who are enslaved, people who are under a, a Babylonian guard, do they not see the new thing that, God, that you're doing for them? Of course not. That's like going to somebody who's got cancer and they're in the middle of their treatment and you come to them and say, God is doing a new thing. Don't you perceive it? No, I'm currently sick going through treatment. That's like going to somebody who's in jail, who's locked up uh, wrongly, and maybe they were falsely accused, and you walk in there and you tell them, "Uh, God is doing a no thing. Don't you perceive it? No, I'm, I'm still in handcuffs. No, I'm still in prison. I don't see it, God. And I think for some of us uh, watching this right now, uh, we want to believe that God is going to do something new for our lives. And we hear preachers talk about the best is yet to come. And you're like, that's nice, preacher, but my current situation sucks. My current situation doesn't seem like it's changing. What I see right now is misfortune, heartache, hardship. 
No, I don't see it, God. Why is God asking them this? Why is God asking them if they see this new thing that he's doing? Is because God is calling them to exercise faith. And I think God is telling us the same thing in this story. He's calling us to exercise faith. If you are in that situation in your life where you don't see the future, you're so caught up in looking at the past, but you don't see where God is leading you. God is saying, do you believe by faith that I can do this new thing that I've commanded over your life? See, faith is established by looking back. There's nothing wrong with looking back. There's nothing wrong with understanding what God has done for us. Faith is established by looking back, but it is matured and experienced only by looking forward. He goes on and he says, I will make a way in the wilderness where there's no clear path. God says, you may not see what's ahead. You may feel like you're stuck in a space where it's foggy and I don't know how to make the next step. He says, listen, trust me, I will make a pathway in the wilderness. I just need you to trust me and move forward. He goes on, he says, I will make rivers in the desert where there's no natural sign of refreshing, where you feel that there's a lack, where you feel like there's just no way that the miracle is going to take place. God says, I will make rivers in the desert. I will bring about what never existed and cause it to exist. But that thing that you're looking for, You won't find it looking back. You will have to look forward. Can I tell you something? The miracle is ahead. The miracle is ahead. See, it's easy to get caught up in simply looking at what God has done. But God is not limited by what he's done. God is a God of a new possible. Uh, See, uh, it doesn't matter how we got here. As long as we know with God is how we're going to get there. It doesn't matter what we did wrong in the past. It doesn't matter how things turned on us in the past. All that matters is with God, he says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. And with God is how we get there because the miracle is ahead. You know, when 2020 started, No one had a clue that we would have to deal with pandemics and protests. Everybody had full faith in 2020. Everybody was believing that this was the year of vision. This is the year that things are going to change. And I'm here to tell you, I believe it is still the year that God's hand is still at work. I do believe that 2020 seems like a setback, but what it is, is a setup. When COVID-19 came, every church was shut down and it felt like the doors of the church were now closed. But what God was saying, no, I'm just swinging them even wide open. Rather than bringing people here, I'm going to meet them there. God wants to do something still in 2020. And I want to ask you, would you have the faith to ask God for 2020 vision and say, God, I know that you're doing a new thing. I want to see with spiritual eyes. Will you clear my eyes? Will you give me a 2020 vision to recognize how you are at work in and around us? Because God doesn't want us to look at the victories of the past, but the miracles of the future. It's written. What no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor the heart of man has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Because God is doing a new thing and now it springs forth. Don't you perceive it? Will you ask God to give you clear eyes? Because if we keep our eyes on the future, we'll recognize that the miracle is ahead. Hey, for some of you today, the greatest miracle that could happen in your life is you giving your life to Jesus and him transforming your life and giving you hope and giving you peace and putting back together some of the broken pieces that we carry inside of us. And that could only happen when we offer our lives to the Lord. And so I want to invite you to pray a prayer with me. So close your eyes and repeat the words that I am going to be praying. Let's pray. Say, dear God, 
I come to you today and I say I'm sorry for the mistakes that I've made, for the sins that I've committed. I give you my life. I give you everything. I need a miracle. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer today, I want to be the first person to say congratulations. You made the best decision of your life. And I want to help you on this new journey that you're on. And all you need to do is actually send me a text message and I'm going to email you some resources that are going to bless your life and draw you closer to God. All you need to do is text the word amen to 786-541-1020. Text the word amen to 786-541-1020. Maybe today you're watching this service and you want to support the ministry of Love Unlimited. Love Unlimited is getting ready to relaunch the church. We're actually getting ready to have a series of outreaches in the city of Miami to give back to those that are hungry, to those that have lost their job, to children that need school supplies. We're also going to be renovating a school, a school playground. And we can't do any of this stuff if we don't all come together and support the ministry. And you can do that today by going to loveunlimited.com forward slash give, or you can give using Cash App, going to your Cash App app like you would do for any other transaction and using the dollar sign and the word love unlimited. I want to encourage you guys to give with a joyful heart and help us to take the word of God and the love of Jesus here in the city of Miami and beyond. God bless you. And I want to invite you to worship with us. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory.
Hey, I hope you enjoyed that song the way that I did. And next Sunday, I am going to be preaching. You'll be hearing from me. And I want to encourage you guys right now to do a couple things to this video. Like it, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And also, share the video. People watch our videos every week and give their lives to Christ. Their lives are transformed. And it only happens when you share the video to people that you know. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next week.